This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I've got my co-host Robbie Hall back with me. Welcome back, Robbie. You, you may ask him. You have been busy. You've been here almost every week bringing somebody with you too. So I'm going to throw it over to you because you've got another special guest with you today. Awesome. Our guest today is Sianna Connie from the Smith Falls Heritage House. May is the museum month and we had we have lots to talk about. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks Robbie, I'm happy to be here. Our museum is uh, uh, is ready for another season. You had a green carnival in April. How did that go? Oh, it was really good. So that was April 20th, and you never know what the weather's going to be like in April. So uh, it started out cold, but it didn't start raining until we only had about 30 minutes left. So we did get rained out, uh, but before that, it was great. It was really well attended. It was our second year doing it. So uh, we're trying to build up kind of having a spring festival because we go really heavy in the summer and really heavy in the fall. So it's nice to have something in the spring. And the firefighters, the Smith Falls Firefighters Association was there and they were amazing with their barbecue and lots of kids on the bouncy castle and uh, there's axe throwing and scavenger hunts. So it was a lot of fun. Next year it's going to be even better weather and it'll be great. So. We went so movie under the stars was going to happen this year but it is can you talk about this yes so just like everyone i think we were all kind of sitting in wait to see if it would happen this year we were really quite sad about the equipment being stolen last year and we weren't sure how long it would take because not everybody just sells outdoor movie equipment. You can't just go to Walmart and buy that. So uh, we're in the process though of getting all the equipment we need um, and it should be in on time. So I've already reached out to our, some of our past sponsorships um, and some of new sponsors. And uh, really the event does not run without our sponsorship um, with the movie, movie licenses and the cost of pre-show and stuff like that. So I've been in touch with them. Uh, and if anybody else is interested in sponsoring, just feel free to reach out to the museum. Um, but we are really excited to run it again this summer. Um, the only thing is we are, the stuff has been ordered. We're just kind of waiting on it coming in. So we are encouraging people to stay up to date on our, on our Facebook page, the Movies Under the Stars and Heritage House. Uh, and we'll let people know if we have to run at like a reduced capacity. So it might just start later in July or only August, but we are hopeful right now that we'll be able to do the full season, so. Now, there is a survey to fill out to, to help choose movies this year. Can you give us a few examples from the movies on the survey? Absolutely. So we've got a lot of good movies this year. The Barbie movie is a big one. Uh, I think that's probably definite at this point. Uh, we've got Wonka on that list, Wish. Um, the New Mean Girls and the New Haunted Mansion. We're intrigued by that one. We think it would be fun to do like a Halloween in the summer kind of event. Uh, so there's lots more on the survey too. Um, and it will depend kind of uh, on licensing if we can get it in time as well. So. Well, can we find this survey? So the survey, you can find it on the Smith Falls uh, Movies Under the Stars Facebook page, and we have shared that on the museum's Facebook page as well. Are uh, there going to be summer camps again this year? Yes, absolutely. So we're going to run kind of at the similar as the past couple years. So there'll be one full week in July and then one full week in August. So you can sign up for the full week at a reduced rate or you can sign up just per day. Uh, they're for ages uh, 6 to 12 and they run from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So we have been in touch hoping to do um, Voyager canoeing again for one day each week. And we usually do some outreach like uh, head over to the splash pad or have some of the other museums kind of help us out. So we're working on our themes but our registration is open and you can visit the museum Facebook page to find the link or if they send us an email we can get that sent off to anybody interested. 
you have a big event on June 1st. Beauty Juice playing is a big part of it. Can you tell us about this big day? Yes, absolutely. And I'm a big Beatles fan, so I'm very excited about this, and the museum is too. So June 1st is our opening uh, for our new exhibit called Beatlemania, and it's celebrating 60 years of RCA pressing Beatles records in Smith Falls. So we're going to have a cover band on the lawn uh, called Beetle Ju Beetlejuice, and they're a local band. And they start at 4 p.m. and go till 6 p.m. Uh, before that, the public will have their first chance to see the exhibit. That's the first time they can come in and check it out in the afternoon. Uh, the event is admission by donation. Um, and we just encourage people to stay up to date with us as well because our rain plan is the curling club. And the, uh, the curling club has uh, an actual capacity limit, so it'll be first come, first served if it, uh, we do get rained out. Uh, but there will be a taco truck on the lawn too if we're out on the lawn. And uh, we have a few people that are going to come up and speak before the band comes on, like Stu Patterson, who used to work at CJET, and, and a few, I think uh, Jay Brennan too, and everyone's going to be there. So, yeah. I know Kathy has some more questions about this too. So I am going to pass this back to her. Thanks, Robbie. Awesome. At Beetlejuice, I, di I didn't realize they were a local band. Yes, I believe that they are um, also, some of the band members are also part of the Commuters, which is a, another local okay. band, like I think in the Perth area. I'm not certain on that, but yeah, they're, they're pretty local, so we're really excited about that. So yeah. we're hoping to have it out on the front lawn? Yes, that is the ideal plan. It's going to be a beautiful, sunny day, not too hot, uh, and we chose around 4 to 6 p.m., so still light out so you can see and the bugs haven't gotten bad so we're really hopeful that it'll be out in the lawn and then that way we'll have the taco truck um, pulled right up and people can eat a little bit and enjoy the music and also come in and check out the exhibit. So, so you want people to bring their lawn chairs then? Uh, we will have some, um, oh, okay. we have some museum uh, just like standard white outdoor chairs that mm -hmm. we'll have set up too but people are more than welcome to bring their own seating. Yeah it's going to be a beautiful day but the yeah. backup plan at the curling rink that's a great idea. Yes. Right next door too. So exactly yeah. and they host bands quite often so we know that it'll it'll be great either way it's just that uh, we're not sure since we're a mission by no donation and anybody can kind of come that uh, just keep an eye on it because if it is at a capacity in the curling club not everyone might be able to get in so, so and the the connection with the RCA Victor plant and Beatle the Beatles too because RCA printed their, their records. Exactly, yeah. So RCA Victor opened in 1954 in Smith Falls and there were other RCA Victor plants like the one in Toronto and so they would actually create the metal lacquers and then send them over to the Smith Falls plant where they would actually press the records. So uh, they pressed uh, Love Me Do and P.S. I Love You in February of 1963, um, which was kind of, we've had people say, you know, Smith Falls is ground zero for Beatles in North America. So it's super exciting. Not a lot of people really know that uh, about Smith Falls. So this exhibit is kind of an opportunity to learn a little bit more about that, learn some stuff just about Beatles and Beatle memorabilia, and of course, uh, C-Jet as well. So. Excellent, excellent. That's going to be a, a, an exhibit inside the building. Yeah, so it's going to be inside the building. It's in our main kind of exhibit area and it's going to be running all summer. So people will be able to come after the opening night. It's not just happening the exhibit on June 1st. It just opens on June 1st. Now you still have other uh, events going on too. The following day you've got a tarot reading. Yeah, yes. so we have a, a lovely museum volunteer named Jamie. He is awesome and he does some tarot readings and he actually came to us with the idea of, about uh, uh, coming in you know a day that the museum's just running like our regular tours and programming and adding to it so it's kind of it's very exciting yeah. excellent I mean summer's here too what are your hours you're open for the yeah public now? so we are fully open at our summer hours so we're open Wednesday to Sunday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. excellent excellent so once again the Beetlejuice June 1st yes and you're open all day but the, they're gonna be performing at 4 Yes, 4, 4 p.m. is their start for performing. Um, and then we encourage people to come a little bit earlier uh, so they can hear some of our, our guest speakers talk as well. And that's admission by donation. Yes. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Once again, June 1st for Beetlejuice. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great summer. You always have a great summer at the Heritage House Museum too. We so. are very excited. And you're located at? We are at 11 Old Size Road, uh, just across from Lower Reach Park. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you very much for coming here today. Sienna Colley from our Smith Falls Heritage House Museum and Robbie, thanks again for co-hosting today. You're very welcome. Thanks, Robbie, and thanks, Kathy.